We've already been receiving many, many calls from the mainland, outer islands. People are just so excited to get back together and relive our old memories and fun times. There's a place that I've known and haven't grown. The first home that I knew, beloved Punene. We have people have places that they can go back to for their childhood. Yeah, That's they don't used to live, but we don't have it. Our childhood is in here. Yeah, yeah. That's where it is. The place is right in there. Yeah. Your it's memories, your love, your everything is in there, yeah. in your heart. And put in it. And you know today, and which is correct, today now they're teaching the kids to pronounce it correctly. I think for us plantation kids, I don't think for us we'll ever be able, comfortable saying Punane. We're inviting everybody, whether you're from Punane or not. On Friday, we are planning to have uh, people come and pick up their tickets and their t-shirts. The tickets are for the lucky numbers and uh, people who ordered all their t-shirts to pick it up so that they, they could wear it on Saturday, which is the big event. If you notice over here, that's a sprocket from the mill. We decided to go with the same logo as they did in 1983. And if you go down to the museum in Punane, you wouldn't see the big sprocket wheel that we're talking about. And every section of the, of the sprocket would be a camp. You can see the crowd. Oh, everybody gonna be happy, having a good time, and just remembering. Cannot beat this camp life here. Yeah? Saturday will be the main event. So we estimate maybe about uh, 1,000 to 1,200 people that were there for the event. Well, I haven't seen my classmates for a long time, many years. Ever since we graduated, I only see certain people. But you see, I gotta see the face, but sometimes I forget the name. So the reason why I went to the reunion, because I didn't meet half of my classmates was so different. I didn't even know they were, who they were until I seen the name tag. And I said, oh! I want to see how everybody else looked. You know, everybody is different. Some of them look me. I'm here to be at the reunion to enjoy my classmates and all my former Camp 5 Kunene people. What made Kunene special? The people that are here today. <laughs> and they even fell in love with the building that is still standing, otherwise it would have been demolished a long time ago. Punani school is so sentimental to all of us. Father is, everybody here looks around and reminisces and thinks about their time in this school and in this place. Father, would you help them to remember you and how you were very much a part of their growing up? I'm being interviewed right here by my third grade classroom. Mrs. Martin was my teacher. She was kind of strict, but she was a wonderful teacher. This is a Punani school. It's an actual Punani school, the tray that we use at school to get our lunches. Graduated Punani school in 1952. And I was going to Punani school. I wasn't one of those A students, by the way. I was one of those C and D type. This is what our song that we used to sing, especially when we, we have assemblies. Punane, Punane, hail to thee. Punane that we love so well will always be true and will stand by you. Punane, all hail to thee. We're located at the old Punane school campus the old um, wooden long schoolhouse uh, made out of two classrooms. We take part in one of the classrooms, which is our, just our office. Um, and we're here with Community Work Day, which is across the street. Uh, we're also here with Department of Education um, specialists in the two-story building made up of resource teachers, psychologists, um, different kinds of specialists that help students within the community. We also have the Friends of the Library, which is behind us, where anyone can come and um, buy books or also donate books and there's also the alternative learning school for high school students uh, which may be made out of Baldwin and Maui high school students who uh, come here every day 
and um, they also volunteer with us as well. Master Moriyama, who is our MC. We need to get, you know, you guys settle down, quiet. Father, we thank you for such a, a strong and rich heritage of families being united together, of people from all over the world coming to this place, Lord. Father, may this be an awesome time where you would be glorified and help everyone to have just a great time, Lord, in remembering their past, most of all to remember you. Deacon Albert Phillips, he's from Spanish B. Don't tell me how he came Deacon because I don't know. Yeah. To me, all this time, he was a Kolohe guy. But, you know, people can change. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this beautiful and wonderful environment to ask that you guide us and protect us throughout the day, that we will serve you in no matter what, that you are the number one for this day. Some of my memories of Punane is spending a lot of time at Holy Family Church. On Sundays, my mom used to cook breakfast for the priests. The, the core, a group of women, about six of them, used to clean the Holy Family Church every Saturday. For the teenage girls, we all belong to the sodality. It was a, a way of life that's no longer you know? They had a church hall. They'd have, um, oh, those days we could have feasts. Fish Pond, Bazaar, they had a big bingo booth. The Holy Family Feast was the best feast on the island. Bingos and lucky numbers, horse riding for the kids. The horses were sponsored by the plantation. Everybody used to come to our feast every single year because I think we were the only church that had bingo. And they had fabulous prizes, you know. That bingo drew people from all over the island. They would have country store items like, um, you know those pickled beans? Forget the Dramush. The church at that time was a place of reverence and respect. And you went to church every Sunday and any special days for church. It wasn't something that you were expected to do. It was something that you did because you wanted to do it. If people cannot, the uh, old folks cannot uh, go to church, we light these two candles or three candles and they make the prayers with the rosary and all that. They pray for everybody. On behalf of our committee, I'd like to thank all of you to come in and make this uh, a great event. And uh, without you people, this would never happen. And to all our sponsors, we thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce to you our president from Honolulu, Lawrence Peralta. He was very instrumental to getting this started. It's a magnificent crowd. Today we celebrate the magic of Punane. I'm with Larry. I'm from the class of 54. As you can see by my cap here, we're really a, a strong class and a lot of our classmates are part of the committee for this reunion. And Larry has been spiritual and instrumental in doing a lot of our class reunions from the class of 54 from here, from Punene, and our high school class of 58 from Baldwin. And he's done a lot, and it's, without him, I don't think a lot of us would be here today. It was Larry Peralta's idea to begin with, yeah. And so, um, in behalf of my family, the Oson family from um, Spanish A, I want to present Larry um, a little quilt that I made. Um, it's just something small because he's getting old and because he's got his operations and everything and he's going to be sitting in the chair for a long time, I, I did this quilt for him. So Larry, thank you. I want to thank the members of the committee for the year hard work that they did. But this is Marie and uh, Andretti Archie. She's the other coach I'm with myself. My sister, Linda Wheeler, invited me to a meeting they were having. So I said, well, okay, I'll go and attend the meeting, not knowing that I was going to be part of the um, committee. Ron Daniels. Marie Andretti was the vice chairman, and Marie's my cousin, so that oh. explains it. <laughs> she asked me if I'd get involved, and I said, yeah, let's, let's go. 
you know, be a nice thing to do. I'd be more than happy because I knew I would get to see many, many people that I had not seen for, you know, many years. It was a lot of work, but the committee was one of the best that I worked with. We did the decorating of the stage and, you know, just all the manual labor. Betty Yamashiro. Joseph Madala, where are you? James Enriquez. Larry DiCabra. Basically, I assisted Linda with keeping records and also with the treasurer keeping records on that and creating a database. All the people that had signed up and the various uh, things that they had ordered for the reunion. So when they came by, we had a means of uh, distributing the items, the t-shirts, etc. and the luau tickets to the various people as they would register. And Ramos Garcia. Linda Andretti. Willem. Gaylord Kubota. He's at the museum uh, taking care of the uh, festival. Carmen Boloba Torres. Joseph Joe Pantenala. John Watermar Okuda. Joan. Joe M. Suki is not here, but I think the wife is. Evelyn Alamelo Kanashiro. Francis Suki. Boss. Linda Ekermandus Martin. Louis Camber, co chairman. Francis Boss Suki. And Stacy Andretti Eaton. I have a message from Mayor Charmaine Tavares. She wants me to deliver to you her warm wishes, and in particular, to let you know that our Maui's plantation camps are famous. They are famous around the world and famous here in Hawaii, ne, and very, very well respected in Maui County. Maui's plantation camps are famous for its people, for the spirit of its people, and people like you of Pu'unene Camp. The way that you have come together to share your lives, your collective history, and your own individual cultures. For generations, Punene Camp has been alive with working, caring, and determined people. These are your roots. And although Punene Camp isn't physically here today, it lives on inside each of you, your children, their ohana, and everything that you bring to your own neighborhoods today. Council member, state representative, State Senators, please uh, come up to be recognized. You notice, eh? Election year or not, the old faithfuls are here. Joe Pantinella, put in a guy. Part of my responsibility for this event is to make sure that the county is supporting the Punene reunion. Thank you, Louis, and thank you, Marie, for making this event a successful one. Thank you very much. Gladys Baisa, and uh, I know his last name is Molina. What is his first name? Mike. 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 Terrific, you guys. Mike Molina. Okay, the reason why we recognize these people, not only are they doing good for us, even in, if you're not in Punene anymore, but for the county and even for statewide, whatever they do influences all of our lives. One of the things that I can surely say Punene people taught was about life itself. And the kindest people were in Punene. And you know, the kindest. Yes, they were big hearts, big hearts. And of course, each and every one of you are very, very special people. We are just taking six, however, from the community to recognize. Everybody knows who Dr. Pedersen is. He was a doctor that brought us all to life, myself, That's everyone. True. We all honored Dr. Pedersen. Women and babies' lives were entrusted to this knowledgeable physician who was gifted with compassion and caring for his patients. He absolutely loved being a doctor. A person could always feel safe with Dr. Patterson's care. I think the patients uh, 
felt more comfortable if they saw a doctor, whoever it was, take a bag. It was in his car all the time. He always had it because he did a lot of house calls, and he always had it. In his professional life, Dr. Patterson pursued his lifelong research on the cause of hypertension during pregnancy, and he wrote many, many papers on this subject. I know it was always foremost on his mind. Dr. Patterson's work in this area will surely help women to have more successful lives. You know, he even wrote an autobiography from the Isle of Skye to the Isle of Maui. Dr. Patterson chronicles his life. He shares his joys, his desires, his challenges, and disappointments, which he experienced throughout his life. He had a wonderful sense of humor. Dr. Patterson was a man who loved his family, Maui, and his profession. He died last year, December 29th, 2006 at the age of 94. I think he really liked the children so much, Cindy. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Rose Freitas, she's from Camp Fire, she's really from Pune. And to be inducted in the uh, Hall of Fame, Carl yeah. Girls Hall of Fame, it's a great honor. Mm -hmm. Not only for Rose Freitas, but for all of us in Pune. We have a Pune woman who put Maui in the National Rodeo Arena. Woo! Yes. Rose Camber Freitas grew up in Camp 5 in a family of 11 siblings headed by a supportive mother, Dorothy, who they called Dora, and father, Louis de Cambra, who provided her with a solid foundation in handling many of life's valuable lessons. She learned the value of education, practice, dedication, and commitment from her family who had in their heritage a long line of equestrians. Mrs. Freitas, who has the cowgirl spirit, loves horses and the thrills of riding them, which led her on the path to becoming one of the top cowgirls in the United States. Inspired, motivated, and supported by her Paniolo husband, Raymond. Raymond, where are you? Out in the wheelchair. She's the first woman in Hawaii to do this. She became the National Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame inductee honoree for the year 2006. Talk about fame. about her life in Punane and all the vivid memories she holds dear of this special place, she says, oh, life in Punane was rich and colorful. Currently, Mrs. Freitas lives in Makawao with her husband, Raymond. She has a daughter, Sharon, and a granddaughter, Heather, who fill her life with joy. Thank you, and I thank every one of you who are instrumental in putting this whole program together. It's just marvelous. Thank you. Today we have Frances representing her husband, Joe Suki. And the title that we've given for Joe Suki is A Man's Uphill Trek from the Punane Camp to the State Legislature. Yay. A quiet person, the Punane Mill Camp man, has made eye-opening decisions that affected people's lives in the whole state of Hawaii. As the Emeritus State Speaker of the House, Joe Suki welded power and influence over many, many important people and times in the history of Hawaii. He has been in the legislature for over 25 years, serving in very important committees. And Joe has been a realtor too, and he owns Joe M. Suki LLC here on Maui. He is involved in many, many community organizations as a director, including the Cameron Center, Federal Land Bank, Maui Economic Development Board, and Maui Soda and Ice Company. Joe is married to the former Punene resident, 
Francis Forge, who lived in Spanish aid camp, and they have two children, Desiree, Desiree and Mark. Francis? Hello, aloha. I'm sorry, Joe sends his regrets. He had a meeting on the mainland, and he was hoping he would be here to see all of you, but um, I'm, that's why I'm taking a lot of pictures. <laughs> Thank you. Born and raised in Punene in Spanish A camp, Joe Pantanella paved a path through the Kahului district in Maui to become a Maui County Councilman. Joe's primary focus includes core services like public safety, fire, and police prote protection economic and workforce development, education, transportation, infrastructure, and affordable housing. Previously, Joe worked for GTE Hawaiian Tel for 34 years, retiring in 1997 as the Maui manager. He served on numerous boards and commissions, including Child and Family Services, Maui United Way, County of Maui Salary Commission, Maui Planning Commission, and was a former Maui County Fair Director. He remains active in the community. He lives in Kahului with his wife, the former Charlotte Rulona, a former resident of Alabama Village. They have two grown children, John, who is married to Christy DeRego, and Michelle, married to Ryan Suzuki, and three grandsons whom they simply adore. Uh, when I was attending Ponene School, my dream was to come on airline pilot. Not my politician in the end, but um, trying to look for my wife. Uh, if, if my wife is here, Charlotte, 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 Charlotte be here. <laughs> She's trying to hide, I guess. She's an Alabama girl, so you, you know the thing that she always reminds me of? She says, <clears throat> don't forget where you came from. Put in there. Thank you. Chuck Hazama is a former Maguero Camp resident who took his charisma, skills, and talents to a mainland city and brought it alive with events and activities that touched people's hearts. From 1979 to 1995, Mr. Hazama was the mayor of Rochester, Minnesota. During his 17 years tenure as mayor, Rochester achieved economic revitalization and was designated in the Money Magazine as the number one city place to live. Also, Mr. Hazama is a director of the Nisai Veterans Memorial Center. Mr. Hazama took a plantation philosophy and he applied it to the mainland politics when he gave Rochester its first brush with minority representation. He said, the key to getting elected as a minority is to downplay its significance. From starting the first balloon races in Rochester from 1980 through 1988 and re-establishing the event as part of the Rochester Fest in 1995 to his involvement in the Mayo Clinic to his charitable work, Mr. Hazama keeps active in the communities in which he lives. Mr. Chuck Hazama, terrific person. This is the woman who had Punene in her heart and she shared it in song. Nancy was born in Lahaina and raised in Spanish A in Punene. From a young age, she loved to sing and dance. It was in her blood. Gifted with a vivid memory, she can remember so many people's names and faces, and positive attitude, she remembered the times and the people of Punene. Her heart was full of these images of the good life spent in Punene and the diverse faces of the people who lived here. One day she took a pen in hand and she scribed a song about the place she loved. She called her song, Aloha Beloved Punene. It was her legacy to the people of Punene, what they felt in their hearts she was able to put in the feelings in the song to be sung and enjoyed, not only in this period of time, but for many years to come. Mrs. Deluge has certainly left an indelible mark in the hearts of Punane people everywhere who sing her song and recall the precious times in the plantation. 
Nancy lives in Kahului and has two grown daughters, Henrietta Chong and Natalie, who lives in Portland, Oregon, and a deceased son, Dennis. She has four grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. Nancy DeLuke. All I want to say is I am so grateful to see so many of you over here. I didn't expect this many people. Many are not with us anymore. And that is why I wanted to write that song because I felt that each and every one of us in Punene had contributed a lot to make Punene what it was. And I thank the committee for asking me to come over and do my thing. Thank you. And then we had um, a Puerto Rican lady in the camp. She was known as Lola Guela to everybody, but her real name is Dolores Rodriguez Pacheco. She was a curadera. Curadera now. The doctors would send people to her, and she would send people to the doctors. Yeah, if you if you will go to her with sick, sick, your babies don't eat, only throw up, she would rub them and they would be fine. And she never turned anybody away. Whatever money she made, she sent it to the church. She was a hero, Lola Pacheco. She was a good lady. She lived till the age of 93. I have those every year for my grandchildren on Halloween. I decorate them every year in the garage, all of us, you know. When I was making it, I thought of uh, this old Puerto Rican man that used to live at the plantation house, and my mom used to go over and help him clean the house. This, uh, this single man and his mom, he used to live with his mom, and his name was Gallo. So when I made that man, I thought, oh my, he really looks like Gallo. This is the Borch of Feliciano Ohana. Janaski family. As we move along, you see the Pantanilla family. This was the Canberra family. Louis Camera, his sister Lucille, and Millie. This is their family here. And their cousins. And this is the, the Camera, Kinoris family. This would be the Andretti family. This is Marie Andretti and her wedding there. Marie's mom and dad when they got married. And back here is the Baloba family, Baloba and Torres. The Daniels family. My father and mother, Peter and Gloria Enriquez. This is 1920. They got married. A very elegant uh, picture, I thought. This is the De Cambras. Over here is the De La Cruz family. They left Papunane in 1930. And this guy brought this picture to share with us here in Spanish B, 1930. Yeah, Charmaine Tavares. Thank you, Buster. You just trying to pull your leg. You know, the guy's a real joker and a magician. Are you still doing magic? Yeah, he's still doing magic. So I just wanted to stop by and say hi and what a great thing it is to be here. And it's really important for us to remember where we came from, where our families came from, the sacrifices that our, our parents and grandparents made so that we can have a better life. And it's through reunions like this that we get together and we can share some of that and kind of give thanks to the folks who made it possible to have the lives we have here today. So you guys have a great lunch. Won't hold you up and have a great day. Those of you who have lunch tickets, just line up. And don't worry, there's, as long as you have a ticket, you're going to have lunch. Bentos and banquets, and the people got it at cost. The truck would come around to deliver food. Uh, the truck would come around also to sell food off of the truck, and he would drive down the street and honk his horn, and everybody would run out there. That was Mr. Noda. Mr. He Noda. used to come with his Chevy truck. That's right. And he'd open up the flaps, and all the vegetables and fruits would be displayed, mm -hmm. and the ladies would all come out, and he'd go down about six or seven houses, blow his horn again, and all the ladies would come out. You know, And that's where we'd get our candies and treats. When you cooked on his kerosene stove, the, the smell of the food was just something that we never, we never can forget about it. People would have their own veg vegetable gardens. My dad had raised pigs and he yeah, raised cows, had pigs. so we always and had, had food. Pigs. There was a lot of fruit trees, so 
you know, we'd eat avocados with sugar. There were a lot of star fruit hanging from the, the, in the as you walked in the trail, there was a lot of star fruit uh, growing over, and we would pick all the star fruit and eat the star fruit on the way home. We had um, uh, people that used to make bread. They had ovens, Portuguese ovens, those big ovens. Growing up within the camps during that period, you know, the mid-40s, late-40s, early-50s. Most of the people living in the camps were either immigrants or their parents were immigrants. With their move to the islands, they brought, of course, all of the various foods, the ethnic foods, and so it was a wide variety of foods that was available. But most of it was simple because people literally didn't have money. Uh, you know, a can of pork and beans or uh, things like that, you know, that was part of the dinner and uh, the main course of the dinner. Uh, along with tuna and, and things like that. Uh, I don't think anybody starved during that period. Our Centennial and I used to catch frogs in the Punawai down the street here next to the ditch. And we'd uh, take it home, fry the frogs in his house. The whole frog now, you know. And when I grew up, went to the main and found out they only uh, ate frog legs. And to me it was such a waste, you know. It's like roasting a chicken. Saving the legs and throwing the rest of the chicken away. Five, I see a hander. Come on up. Another winner, another winner. The next number is 419. Next number is 461. She's on her way. Yeah, Good, wow. thank you. Another thing. Let's go. Eight, zero, six, six. Eight, two, two, seven. And that, that monkey part, the monkey part was from Megaro Camp, you know. No, 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 no kidding. Yeah, hey. You get one label and then it's uh, dated and uh, recorded in the... Uh, Museum already. Wow. Yeah, that. We're gonna put you into the mood. Uh, okay, we're gonna uh, 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 spell out. You know how to spell Punene. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, yeah, he said you guys got a real yell now. Otherwise, not gonna be good. Good morning to all of you. We're very happy to share in celebration with the Pu'unene uh, reunion. And I'm very glad to say that I'm married to a Pu'unene boy from a small camp. And then they moved to uh, Camp 5, uh, the Balubar Ohana. Hello, Wendy. I see Aguinaldo is back there. I see Pacheco is back there. Aloha. had the, uh, the senior citizens group, the uh, Tomodachi Strummers. And to me it was neat that people in the late 70s and 80s entertained and they were very happy and you know that we uh, invited them to play for us, you know, to join our group.
silver dollars. We used to say amateur night, and then you would sing there. And how I knew that, I had my Uncle Norman. He went there and sang a, a cowboy song and came in third or second place. They used to have it, I think, on like, I don't know if it was Saturday night at the Punani Community Center. Right across Punani School. Right across, across the, the school. Right Mother in the middle was, was a stage. In. They had the contest there and then there was held for boxing also. If you were chosen, you would be entitled to be on the radio. And I was so very proud to learn that my sisters and my brothers were on the show. This is our culture room. Some of the people that lived in the village brought items that was important or they wanted to share with everyone. These people came from many parts of the world, came together, and they, uh, with all their different uh, cultures, uh, their skills, it, uh, they put it all together. That's why this village remains stable. These are some of the items that we used during the camp days. This is known as our cow cow team. You put rice on the bottom, uh, the eggs, and put a ghee sausage or uh, Vienna sausage in it, or whatever kind of vegetables and meat. It's kind of unique, very important item. This item is from Betty Yamashiro. He used to cook <laughs> rice in here. The guy who sold this to us, he sold it to most of us here, is to make shave ice. We would make shave ice in the summertime, and we used to have block ice, and so we used to make our own shave ice. This is a coal iron. And Louis Camper's BB gun there. Most of the kids had BB guns and we used to go for hunting a lot. This is milk covers that we had in the camp. This is uh, Anima and this is the pot they used in the Punani Hospital. I also wanted to get information from the people coming over, have them sit down and write their fun times in the camp. So what I did was I made a whole bunch of books here for them to write what they remember in their uh, camp life. Louis Camber also made these maps here. You could look what camp you were in and in what house lot you were uh, in. I can still remember my dad working in the cane field. Every time he had lunch, he would call us and we would go 
up to the cane field just to ride the the crane. While the cane was growing and nice and lush and we'd go vegetable hunting and get boxes of tomatoes and that long Filipino beans or beans. Yeah, in the fields. In the fields. Thanks and to the compa the Filipino compa man, they would plant all the squash, pumpkins. I used to walk for three sheep, six to two, two to ten, and ten to six. And my father used to work evening shift sometimes, a two to ten shift. We would wait for him there by the humps, and he would, the turtle hauler would come by, he would pick us up. We would go with him into the field, and they would harvest the cane, and then the workers on the field would see us on the turtle hauler, and they would cut fresh, the freshly harvested cane, burnt cane, and give us the cane to eat. And it was so exciting to ride the turtle hauler, it was so scary and exciting. Of course, all the children really enjoyed Fire cane. Oh, we used to be so excited. In fact, they'd burn cane right in front of our house. We could just run across the street and go pick up sugar cane. And right on the side of Maguero Camp, and um, everybody would be out there watching this spectacular fire. No, we were not afraid. This painting was done by Hajime Okuda in 1978. It depicts the average house in Spanish B. It's one of the last houses that's uh, still there. It's a typical house, as you can see, it's mounted on stilts, kind of weather beaten, and the garage there with a tin roof, kind of weather beaten too. We love the Punane Theater. And Richard Canberra, his uncle. <laughs> Caught our tickets and let us go in free, that's why everybody <laughs> liked him, you know. He was our hero. We all thought he looked like Bert Lancaster. It was 20 cents for a regular ticket and 40 cents for, our, for the reserve. The Corona. Yeah, we would take a stub that's broken already and we'd just give you know, my uncle the stub. <laughs> <laughs> he would just accept it and would not say nothing, you know. If there was a scary movie like Frankenstein, the werewolf and stuff, you have to let everybody in the camp know that you're going to the movies because we all walk to the theater together. It was a treat for the kids because they had the nine cents Saturday show. There was no television as such as that, and that, that was your means of entertainment. It was, you look forward to going to see the cartoons. And of course they had the news reels in those times. And of course to enjoy the good cowboy movies. My auntie Ida Diaz, she was a custodian at uh, Punini Tera, and we used to help her. Mondays was Filipino movie. Tuesday, Wednesday, regular movie. Thursday was uh, chapter. Friday was Japanese. Yeah, yeah. And the best thing about going to the theater is there was a bakery next door. You could buy a hot loaf of bread and buy a block of butter and make a puka on the bread, stick the butter inside, squash it up until the butter was all over the bread and you break it in half and you pass it up. It was a simple camp store. Mainly they were, were noted for Saibin and uh, the pastries, the bread and the pies and so forth. We're helping the restaurant there, yeah? serve so Saibin and you know, wash dishes, you know, the regular routine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did make homemade noodles. The seed, you know, they used to have cracked seed. My parents used to buy by pound and we had to segregate it and we put it in a brown package. And I know people, kids used to buy that and they used to suck the package after doing all the thing over there. <laughs> the uh, pastries were like uh, Five ten cents a piece, right? Five ten cents a piece, and uh, in the this is way back. Now. I'm quoting prices way back. Going to school, we should pay. I don't know if it's twenty five cents or for a loaf of bread, right out of the oven. Ten cents and eleven cents. Oh yeah, all <laughs> buttered up, with full of jelly, and we just eat that, you know. The Simon I remember was like thirty cents. Uh, most of the uh, plantation workers. With a big appetite, they would order uh, double, so that's 60 cents a bowl. Don't get paid. So somebody said, you got paid. I said, no, I didn't get paid. <laughs> I'd kill to get that recipe for their cake. Well, after many years, now I don't exactly know the exact day that my parents retired, but uh, after they retired, they moved to Honolulu. Uh, Mr. Sam Sato, who had a store in uh, Sprecklesville, took over. And he ran it for quite a while. I understand now he's moved to uh, Wailuku. My mother was getting colds and coughs and wouldn't stop. 
They said she have to go to Kula Sanatorium. Mr. Hamada, he was the man that used to take us once a month to Kula to see my mom. Once a month, he would drive us to Kula and see my mom. They had the best signing in Pudine. Yeah. I always tell people if they didn't know Pudine because Pudine was all, you know, gone already, all they had to do was put their ear to the ground and they would hear a lot of laughter. You know, because we had good fun. We had seasons for all the games, too. That's correct. If you can do more than three designs, you can come on stage and compete for the three prizes. So we're going to start with you, Evelyn. One eye. Okay. That's five strings. <laughs> oh, again, one eye. <laughs> hey, Evelyn, you're terrific. A winking eye. Mosquito. Ah, oh, the Eiffel Tower. In Punane. <laughs> because we had no money, so you had to play with the strings. <laughs> and did you have a lot of sisters that played string? Fifteen of them. Where did you learn? From friends also. From friends. Bag yeah. is we used to use the durum bags. <laughs> the bull durum bags? Bull durum, bull durum bags, stuff it with hibiscus and leaves, sometimes some rocks. Uh -huh. One guy get the ball or the bean bag and then we hit the next crew. Always end up in fights because sometimes you hit it too hard <laughs> and you cheat me, you have a rock in there. <laughs> How many of you remember the tuna can races? All you have to do is put real strong string, you tie it in a knot and you pull it but you have to make sure that your string is tall enough so that you can go like that. But try do it for your grandchildren and stuff and remind them of the real fun we used to have in Kunane. Okay, now, now, now. <laughs> Most of all I enjoyed was going to the swimming pool and spending my summers there. Swimming a lot. When the swimming pool would close at 5 o'clock, we would swim in the ditch across Punini School. Which we weren't allowed to, but we did. It wasn't unusual to come out from under the water and there's a carcass of a duck or a chicken on your head. Milk covers. You say have the bottles of milk, all the milk covers you save. Yeah. You get it, this is the elephant ear. The beans, individual beans, we played hijiki. So each one, you catch all of it, you keep it. If you can't, then you give it back. <laughs> when I used to tell my sons the toys that we had, they used to laugh. And they said, oh my god, that's so old fashioned. I said, yeah. We had to do that because we couldn't afford to buy toys. We cannot forget the jump rope. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lion, All on lion. the roads outside. I mean, 
before the mothers call the kids for go take a bath or bocha or whatever they call it in those days, we'd be out on the road with, you know, the the jump ropes, right? That's correct. Mostly it's the double car. We played just simple games, right, but it was fun. And of course the main event is going to be our luau. The exact count we had for the luau itself was at 700, 700 people for the luau. Full on luau was $15. The luau was catered through Leslie Vida Jr. They make a superb luau, very authentic, and seems like as though everybody was happy. It's Ono! Delicious! Very good! <laughs> Everybody enjoyed the food and the price. I donated a quilt that I sewed and I embroidered part of it for the occasion of this Punane community reunion. 225, 350 in the back, okay. 350, $400, $400 to be. 450 in the back, $500. He's thinking about it. Right now the bid stands at $500. It was auctioned off and I was just floored by the amount that was generated by that quilt. $500. This is $1,000. going once. $501. It was a beautiful quilt. It's known as Jacob's Ladder in the school colors of uh, red and white with uh, some black to accent it. You got to go home and rest for the Sunday Talk Story session. There you can go in individual groups or just stay together. I want all the Enriquez men to come up front here. We're going to test these Punane men. When did Punane town begin? 1907. Close. 1909. Close. 1990. Nin 1902. Yeah. Closer. 1900. Wow! <laughs> How much was the Saturday morning matinees for HCNS? How much was it? Nine cents. Yeah. What was the brand of soda that they used to give away at the matinee. What was the name of the brand? Nico Cola. Nico Cola. <laughs> when was the last reunion of Punane camps held? 1983. How many camps does Punane have? 13. 16. <laughs> what did behind the bushes? I see you behind. Bushes, me. Pulling around. Yeah. Pulling around. No. Have a kiss. Hi. These were romantic boys. <laughs> Behind the bushes, man. Hey, I'm gonna fight you today. All of you got prizes. Go get your prizes over here. Although today's world is very different now, you know, lunch no longer comes in a tin can container that gets warm by a sun. Lunch today comes from Subway or drive through Fewer people understand what backbreaking labor really is. And even fewer people can remember going to the old Punene clubhouse for a weekend party. And it is no longer common to hear people in our island and our neighborhood say, Hey, who's your father? Who's your mother? Where are you from? Oh, we related. I know everybody in Punene work hard. Everybody struggles, you know. But they worked hard, and uh, it's good to see that uh, everybody came out uh, 
Oh, fine. This reunion is honoring our parents. They made it such a good life for us. You know, there was people there that I hadn't seen for 40 years, and it just seems like the whole environment was just a big family get-together. So we put a lot of hours, everybody worked so hard, very hard, and I think it was a great success. Yeah. To this day, actually, you see somebody that you think you look like from Polonia, hey, you was from Polonia, like that, you ask, you know. Memories cannot, cannot be forgotten. It wasn't all perfect, but close to it. I'm glad that I came, you know. We hope that the reunion continues, although we heard that this would have been the last one. Um, we hope not. It's an undertaking for the younger generation. I like to see it happen, but uh, you know, it's a lot of question marks on that. If they were really like to take the challenge, that'd be really nice.